Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Math Online Tutor. Through this video, we are going to discuss about time. First of all, let us see what are the units of time. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, decades, centuries and millenniums are considered as units of time. In the next section, we are going to see about months and years. As you know, one year includes 12 months. And then, among these months, some months have 31 days, like these are the months with 31 days. And some other months have 30 days, where I have shown you by circling it in red. Then, a special month is there in any calendar, that is February, it has 28 days usually and 29 days in a leap year. What is a decade? A time period of 10 years is considered as a decade. That is, from AD 1 to AD 10, it is considered as the first decade and AD 11 to AD 20, it is considered as the second decade. Then if you take 1021 AD to 1030 AD, this is considered as the 103rd decade. Any year can be included into a, a given decade. See the final example, 2021 to 2030 belongs to the 203rd decade. So that means we are in the 203rd decade now. Now let me tell you a trick to find the decade of a given year. This is very simple. All what you have to do is check the last digit of the given year. If it is a zero, cut it and get the decade by the remaining digits. If it is not a zero, cut it and add one to the previous digit to get the decade. Let's see into some examples. To which decade does AD 1980 belong? Now, in this case, 1980 has the last digit with 0. So, what I do is I cut that and the remaining 3 digits are 198. So, it belongs to the 198th decade. Look into this example. To which decade does AD 1534 belong? Now, here the last digit is 4. So, when it is not 0, we cut it and we add 1 to the previous digit. So now 153 plus 1 becomes 154th decade. So this is a very simple trick. If you need to find out the decade, all what you have to see into the last digit. Then let us go into a century. A time period of 100 years is considered as a century. So it can be said that from AD 1 to AD 100, it is the first century. AD 101 to 200, it is the second century. And AD 1201 to 1300, it is the 13th century. And now we are in the 21st century. So just like finding the decade, centuries also can be found by an easy trick. Here you have to check the last two digits. And if the last two digits are zeros, then you can cut them and get the century. Otherwise, you have to cut both the digits and add one to the previous digit in order to get the century. Just like before, all what you have to do is to check the last two digits. Now, let me give you some examples. To which century does AD 1900 belong? Now, 1900 has two zeros at the end. So we can cut the two zeros and the remaining number is 19. So 1900 belongs to 19th century. When it comes to 1534, here the last two digits are not zeros. But still we cut the two digits and add one to the previous digit. So this becomes 15 plus 1 that is the 16th century. So this is a very easy trick you can do on any given year in order to find out the century. 
Now let us see about a millennium. A millennium is a period of thousand years. And look into these examples. From AD 1 to AD 1000 we consider as the first millennium. From AD 1001 to 2000 we consider as the second millennium. And now we are in the third millennium because we are in between 2001 and 3000. Just like finding the decades and centuries of a given year, a millennium also can be found using a simple trick. So let us look into what is this trick. Here we have to consider the last three digits. If the three digits are zeros, we can cut and get the millennium very simply. And if it is are not zeros, all what we have to do is to cut the last three digit and add one to the previous digit. So look into these examples. To which millennium does 2000 belong? Now here, 2000 has three zeros at the end. So we cut all the zeros and the remaining digit is two. Therefore, it belongs to the second millennium. When it comes to 1534, here the last three digits are 534. All what we do is cut 534 and add one to the previous digit because the last three digits are not zeros. So once again here we get it belongs to the second millennium. In the next section, we are going to look into what is a leap year. A leap year comes once in four years and it has 366 days. The extra day falls in February and in a leap year, February will have 29 days. Now, how to check whether a given year is a leap year or not? This is very simple. First, you have to see whether the given year is a multiple of 100. If so, you have to check whether it is divisible by 400 and if it is divisible by 400 this is a leap year look into this example 2000 is a multiple of 100 then we see whether it is divisible by 400 yes it is divisible by 400 too therefore 2000 is a leap year let us look into some more examples to understand this clearly now, if the given year is not a multiple of 100, all what we have to see is whether this year is divisible by 4. If so, this belongs to a leap year. Now, 2016 is divisible by 4 because we have to check the last two digits here. You have learned the divisibility rules. So, 16 is divisible by 4. Therefore, 2016 is a leap year. Look into this example. 1854 is not divisible by 4. Therefore, it is not a leap year. 1800 is multiple of 100, but 1800 is not divisible by 400. Therefore, 1800 is also not a leap year. So, you have to go through the conditions as I have already mentioned now to check whether an year is a leap year. In the next section, we are going to see into the relationship between units of time. You know 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute, while 60 minutes are equal to 1 hour. 24 hours give you a day and 30 days give you a month. 12 months makes an year and 365 days also gives you 1 year. If the days are 366, we call this year as a leap year. So, let us see how to indicate 250 days in months and days. Here, what you have to do is, as you know, in uh, a month there are 30 days, we divide 250 by 30. Now, in 250, there are 830s. 30 into 8 is 240 and 10 remains. So this gives you in 250 days, there are 8 months and 10 days. Look into this example. Indicate 2 years in months. Now you know 1 year has 12 months. Therefore 2 years will have 2 into 12 months. That is 24 months. The third example is to indicate 2 years in days. Now 1 year has 365 days, therefore 2 years will have 2 into 365 days. That is equal to 730 days. So, these are the examples you may get 
in order to work out related to months and days and the relationship between them. Now let us see the calculations related to time. When you have to add months and days like this, you can simply add as usual. Now look at this, 15 plus 10 gives you 25 and 5 plus 2 gives you 7. So the addition is 7 months and 25 days. Sometimes this becomes a little complicated when the number of days is more than 30. Look into this example. Here, 5 months and 25 days must be added with 2 months and 27 days. Now, if you see carefully, 25 plus 27 will give you a value more than 30. So, in the days column, you can't have a number greater than 29. So, what we do here is we add the days separately and find out how many months are there in, this, in these days. So, we add 25 and 27 separately in a side. That gives you 52. You know in 52, there is one set of 30. So, I subtract that 30 over there and I get 22 as the answer. Now, I put 22 in the column of days and the 30 days I subtracted, I take to the months column as one month like this. Now here, 1 plus 5 plus 2 is equal to 8 months. So the answer is 8 months and 22 days. Now I'm going to tell you about how to subtract months and days from a given set of months and days. Now look into this example. 5 months and 15 days minus 2 months and 10 days. Now as the days can be subtracted, it is easy. Here 15 minus 10 is 5, 5 minus 2 is 3. So the answer is 3 months and 5 days. But look into this example. Now here you can't subtract 20 days from 8 days. Now in this case, we borrow 1 month from the months column to the days column. So when you borrow one month, remember one month has 30 days. So we should add 30 days to the days side. I do it in a separate side. 30 plus 8 is 38. From this 38, I subtract the 20 days that is to be subtracted in the question. Then I get 18. Now this 18, I put over here. And remember now, as we have borrowed one month to the days side, there is only 5 months in the months column. So 5 minus 2 is 3. And this is how you do subtractions regarding months and days. And remember, if you deal with years, when you take an year to the months column, it is equal to 12 months. So hope I made myself clear with calculations regarding time and all the necessary things you should know about time. See you with another Smart Math Kit. Until then, goodbye.